but you know as you know leonardo dicaprio says in inception you know the, the most powerful thing in 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 the world is an is an idea and <laughs> deserve his ideas are in, in in some respects yeah more important more influential than a trophy that has been won by a team that's played in such a way that's kind of forgettable has he shown with this you know let's touch on these principles um tactical principles in possession uh, particularly playing out from the back with the goalkeeper and the centre backs. I mean, f- from what I've seen, Dzerbi has been on the extreme end of that, uh, as that has become, you know, a very popular way of building up uh, among the elite clubs in Europe. Has that always been the case, even when he was in the lower leagues? Has he become more dogmatic as time has gone on, or even adaptable and 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 not? You know, those are the clips that we're going to see on social media that do the rounds because when they play through, it looks amazing. But is he dogmatic on that front or is he what you might call pragmatic or more adaptable? I think one of the things that Brighton wanted to establish is, is he adaptable? Um, Because Potter was, you know, Potter would adjust his game plan depending on how the opponent plays. And, look, you know, Dizerdby, when it comes to his build-up, you know, they will build up with two centre-backs and four, so two plus four, two centre-backs with the full-backs and two midfield players if they're playing against a, a team that has a lone striker. They'll they'll build up with a three and uh, kind of a deep-lying playmaker if they're coming up against two strikers. I kind of think what Brighton wanted to establish is, is he going to go long if, if needed? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say he's not going to go long. If needed, he's going to double down. He will he will look to play through because he believes that inviting teams onto you um, and playing through them gives you advantages. It gives you the possibility to have numerical superiority further up the pitch. And, you know, he wants his team to not give the ball away even when they're numerically at a disadvantage. So if it's a 1v2 or a 2v3, he still wants them to try and play through that mm-hmm. um, uh, and not give the ball away. You know, that was one of his principles that he put in his his thesis when he was studying for his pro license at, at, at Coveciano. You know, th- three things. He wants the ball as much as possible. He never wants his players uh, to get rid of it. Play in the opposition half as much as you can and win, win the ball back as, as fast as you can. There's nothing kind of revolutionary about that. These are things we kind of hear that almost every manager, aspiring manager, wants to do mm-hmm. these days. But, you know, I, I think it's really interesting when you look at the, the data, and, and I think Liam can get into this, is that over his kind of spell at Sassuolo, his team had more touches in their own penalty area progressively every year and that is a trend you usually see in teams that are down the bottom of the table Mm. um, because their opponents come onto them they force them back and they're having to play in their own penalty area but it was a choice from this it it, it wasn't something they were forced into and um and i you know i i'm really interested to see how sanchez um you know is able to do what andrea consigli did the goalkeeper. I mean, no one thought that Andrea Consiglia, the Sassuolo goalkeeper, was going to become this kind of, I wouldn't say he was a playmaker goalkeeper, or a goalkeeper sweeper, but certainly he was asked to kind of read the game in such a way that he would, they would there would never be a big gap between him and his centre-backs. And if that meant that the defensive line was very high, then he was often standing outside of his box. Uh, that he was, he was willing to play with courage, with his feet that, you know, and read the play as well. Um, So I'm interested to see what Sanchez does there. And also the centre-backs, because, I mean, again, Gianmarco Ferrari, you know, not someone you you, you, you will be known to a lot of our listeners, but, you know, principal centre-back at Sassuolo, you know, asked to want the ball at his feet, Um, uh, be quick about moving into open spaces, um, you know, which which doesn't mean sort of defend defending wide open spaces, but when you've got the ball, carry the ball into them and and play out. So I'm interested to see how Dunk and Webster um, deal with that because mm. I think um, 
you know, <laughs> as much as those guys play with the ball quite a lot already, it's going to be mm. it's going to be a, a more extreme version, I think, of what they've they've been used to. Well, at least they haven't been, you know, a million miles away from it in, in the last few seasons under Potter. I, I mean, as you talked about them having more touches inside their own box year on year, I, I, I suspect a reason for that might have been teams, you know, denying or trying desperately not to press them too high because they, they know that that would be after a while, you know, that's just the trap that they want you to fall into. And and so maybe having to be even more patient with it uh, in order to, to draw them onto them. I mean, it would be fascinating to see how West Ham United, for example, who have no interest in pressing at the very top of the pitch, it will be interesting to see how they respond to um, to a deserving Brighton side when they uh, take each other on. Um, out, out of possession, is there anything particularly uh, specific, uh, specific patterns that we might see from deserves Brighton? Just win the back, ball back as soon as possible, and uh, and when you're when you're trying to do that, um, take your cues from what the intention of the opponent is, which is if the opponent is is looking to bear down and go and score, do everything to disrupt and slow him down, stop him. Um, if the opponent is looking to consolidate possession, um, then in, in, in that scenario, look to regroup, get organised, and back into shape. Um, so, yeah, that's yeah, that's more or less the the philosophy. But in in, in Italy, they they talk a, they talk a, a lot about le marcature preventi, preventive, and that is it's 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 when you're on the attack and when you're in the opposition half that you're set up in such a way that if you lose the ball, mm. you are already well positioned to win the ball back, defend. And he is yeah, he was except- putting fullbacks inverted quite early on, wasn't he? Which has become, yeah. you know, uh, you know, uh, common practice. And and part of the reasoning for that is basically to defend in transition uh, a little easier. Yeah. So he's he's obsessed with with that, getting that absolutely right. Um, and you know, again, in terms of influence with Bielsa and Pep. You know, they believe that uh, attacking is the best form of defence because if you're high up the pitch, you're further away from your own goal. Um, you know, again, you know, nothing particularly uh, extraordinary. Um, but, um, but yeah, he's, he's very much off, cut from that cloth rather than, yeah, I mean, it, it, drives, it drives old school Italian managers mad. <laughs> um, those who are now in the TV studio as, as pundits, because more often than not, they're there to analyze when it goes wrong rather sure. than it rather than it goes right. And mm-hmm. they say, "Why aren't you hoofing it, Roberto? Mm-hmm. Why aren't you kicking it into the stands? What are you doing?" Um, and you know, he just yeah, he believes that this is this is the best way for your team to to gain an advantage. Um, so, uh, and, I, and I think the last point on this, his whole ethos is he believes it's 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 a holistic way of playing in that if you play out from the back it means you have to be technically good enough to play out from the back so we're going to work with you to improve your technique and that's going to make you a better player if you play out from the back it means you're taking responsibility because you're taking a risk and you have to accept that risk and accept that responsibility so that's going to make you more of a leader more well-rounded as as a person, not only as a player. Um, and if you succeed doing this and play out play out from the back and cut through a team, you're going to feel really good about it. It's mm-hmm. going to build your confidence. It's going to build your self-esteem. Um, and overall, it's a net positive um, because you know you're becoming a better player. You're becoming a better character, and you're winning. So. Uh, that's why he thoroughly believes in what he does. Uh, I was going to ask lastly, before we turn our attention to the Brighton squad and and, and what he'll be met with uh, or what he has been met with as he uh, takes his first few steps there, with the, the style, uh, the approach, the principles, you've spoken a lot about why why he does it and his, his strong belief that it's the right way to play to win football matches. Is there an aesthetic aspect to this as well is there any anything to do with the romance of football and and playing in a certain way for the fans or aesthetically or is Deserby ultimately 
you know, is this about function? Is this about winning football matches? Yeah, I mean, he doesn't like uh, to be kind of characterised as a philosopher, as a purist. Um, But, you know, he believes that um, in this this kind of holistic approach, Mm. which if you take it beyond the players, if if you're playing a style of football which is technical, which is skill-based, which is attacking, um, the the players won't just enjoy playing it, the fans will enjoy watching it. And it'll create a really good environment um, that that in itself should help build momentum and mm. become self fulfilling in, in delivering wins and maybe trophies. Um, but you know he is. <laughs> I mentioned how polarizing his football is in Italy um, because you know we had a culture war kind of start in in, in his second season. It, it coincided with Massimiliano Allegri's last season at Juventus. And yeah, you know, there was a a former player who's kind of the closest equivalent to Gary Neville on Sky Italia, a guy called Lele Adani. And Adani is is very kind of pro to He believes that because it's in step with modern football trends, this is the route that t- Italian football needs to follow in order to progress and evolve. Um, and and so he talks about you know South American influences and how important they are and and uh, how important it is to look at Bielsa and Pep for, for our reference points, and not the Italian coaches of the past. And I think this has led to this kind of uh, perception of Deserbi as being presumptuous and that's rubbed some people the wrong way. You know, they say, what's this guy ever won? You know, he's only coached small teams apart from, you know, when, obviously when he got the, the offer to go to Shakhtar. Um, why does he have this profile? Uh, it feels disproportionate. Mm. But, you know, as you know, Leonardo DiCaprio says in Inception, you know, the, the most powerful thing in, in, in the world is an, is an idea. And <laughs> Deserbi's ideas are, in, in, in some respects, yeah, more important, more influential than a trophy that has been won by a team that's played in such a way that's kind of forgettable. Mm. Um, so, um, but, you know, I mean, he spends time with, with Pep. We've seen that, um, you know, when he was... Starting out his coaching career, he, you know, he, he made the journey up to the Dolomites where Bayern were in prison training camp so he could watch Pep's Bayern train, learn from it. He was recently at the City football campus with some members of his staff. Um, he's, you know, I mean, I think it's quite interesting that he's since leaving Shakhtar, he's looked to refresh his staff, modernise, update. Um, so he's he's in step. Uh, or he sees, you know... He's brought people in who feels that can keep him current, can can kind of reinforce his ideas. Mm. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, fundamentally there is an aesthetic to it, and I, I think we, we have seen with you know Mancini's Italy and the success that they had, which is Italy winning in a way that they've never never won before, and 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 because they've never won playing that way before, before Mancini did it, people thought Italy can't win that way. And so to see Italy win that way, mm. it kind of validates Deserbi's ideas and says that, you know, yeah, maybe there is, maybe we should be getting behind this guy because, you know, he is proposing a style of football that could be successful uh, for Italy. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, he's a, he's a you know, he's, he's a fascinating figure, really. Mm. 